Okay, folks, today we're going to be making red velvet cake. People love to eat red velvet cake for the Valentine's holiday. So I'm going to show you how I make my red velvet cake. Okay, so we have two baking pans here. And what we're going to do is we're going to oil you our baking pans. And then we're going to lightly coat the oil you baking pans with flour. All right. Okay, so we're going to get some vegetable oil. I'm just going to add small amount to each baking pan and you're going to get a towel and rub the oil all around you want to make sure that you don't use too much oil just enough just enough so that the flour sticks Okay, so now we're going to get some flour and we're going to add the flour to the bacon pans. And the reason that I don't use butter is because butter leaves a crust at the bottom of your cake. We don't want the... So you want to just shake this up and make sure that it's well coated on the sides, okay, and the bottom, like this, make sure it's well coated like that, okay, and you're just going to dump out the excess flour, all right? So this is the way the baking pan is looking. I've knocked my pan up against the sink and I've removed the excess flour. So we're going to sit our baking pans aside and move on to the next step. What you're going to do now is you're going to get a big mixing bowl and to the mixing bowl you're going to add two and one fourth to two and a half cups of cake flour. We're going to be combining all of our dry ingredients first. We're going to now add our two cups of white sugar. We're going to now add two and a half tablespoons of cocoa powder. About two and a half there. We're going to be adding two teaspoons of baking powder and baking powder and baking soda are really important because that's what helps the cake rise. Without that, the cake will be flat. It's not gonna rise without the. So make sure you add two teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. Here's our baking soda. And last but not least, we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Now we're gonna stir this all in until it's evenly distributed. Okay, so now we're going to combine our liquid ingredients. So let's set this aside. Okay, so what we're going to add to the bowl first is a cup of buttermilk. So now we're going to add a half a cup of vegetable oil, and that's what's going to allow the uh, cake to become very moist and tender so it's going to give our cake some moisture and the butter is going to do the same thing we're going to add a half a cup of melted butter as well that's going to give the cake moisture and flavor okay Now before combining our liquid ingredients, what we're going to do is we're going to get three eggs and we're going to separate the egg white from the egg yolks. Alright, so you're going to crack the three eggs like that. It can be kind of difficult sometimes. We're going to add that to the liquid ingredients. Scoop out the yolk. 
feel me? Add that. Scoop out the last one. We're gonna add that, okay? And the only thing that you wanna be left with is egg white, all right? Now we're gonna add the two tablespoons of red food coloring. Two to two and a half should be enough. Add just a little more for good measure. And we're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla. And one teaspoon of white vinegar. Now we're gonna stir in our liquids, ingredients. Okay, so now we're gonna add our liquid mixture to the dry mixture. And we're going to lightly blend the two together. Okay, so we're done blending our cake mix together. So what we're gonna do is, with the egg white, we're gonna beat this up until it begins to bubble. To see a lot of bubbles. All right, see how it bubbled up? And we're gonna add that to this. Blend this in again. So now we're going to get our flour coated baking pans and we're going to add the cake mix to them. I'm gonna drop it a few times to remove the air bubbles. Okay, so we're gonna place these in a 350 degrees oven and we're gonna let them go until you can easily stick a toothpick through the middle and it comes out clean. That should take about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, so while the cake is baking, what we're going to do is we're going to create our buttercream frosting for the cake. Into the bowl, what you're going to add is three cups of icing sugar. To so that, we're going to add our Philly cream cheese. We're going to add our room temperature butter. We're going to add our three tablespoons of whole milk. And our vanilla extract. About two and a half tablespoons of that, two and a half to three. Okay, so we're gonna blend this with our hand mixer on low speed until it's nice and smooth. This may take a little while before it becomes really, really 
smooth. So just keep mixing until it's nice and smooth. Scrape the sides down. Okay, so that's our cake. You're gonna stick a toothpick in the middle. If you don't have one, you can use a fork or knife. And if it comes out clean, that means it's done. And it came out clean, so. Yep, and it's all done. So you're going to get a knife and make sure that you separate the sides. Okay, so we're going to even out the top, scraping this hole here. Bit. All right, so you want to get a plate. Make sure that the plate is bigger than the size of the baking pan. Flip it over. Okay, so that's the way it should look, like that. Okay, so we're gonna top it lightly. Very lightly. And so that you can avoid the crumbs from the cake getting into the icing, um, you're going to coat it first, and then you're gonna sit it in the refrigerator, let it cool off, and then coat it again. But this is the middle part, so it really doesn't matter. Coat it lightly like that. It says the top of the cake. Okay guys, so we finished coating the cake and we're going to be coating it again, but what we need to do is we need to sit this in the refrigerator and allow the frosting that we added to the cake to stiffen up a little bit. So we're going to put it in the refrigerator for about three hours or overnight and then the next day you're going to coat it again with the second coating of frosting. All right. Okay, so this is the way our cake is looking. So I'm just going to add a little more frosting to it. Coat the sides. That's the way your cake should look fully coated like that. And as you can see, there's no crumbs on the top because we coated it first, allowed the first layer of 
frosting to stick to the cake, kind of freeze up a bit, and then we coated it again, okay? So here we have some crumbs that was left over from the bottom of the pan that we baked the cake in. I'm just going to break that up as much as possible to really small pieces. And we're going to decorate the top of the cake with that. Just a little basic decoration. I don't do nothing too fancy. So here's our red velvet cake. We're going to slice it. Mm -mm. This cake is extremely moist. 